Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about the Labvanced event system. And this is the way that we move participants through a study, but it's also the way that we record variables, control trials, and make dynamic changes. I do have instructions already up for some more complicated events and with data frames, so I'll link that in the description below. But today we're just going to do a brief overview of the event system. So I've already created two frames for my study. I just have some instructions and then a picture of a dog. And we're gonna go over some events that are commonly used. And I'm gonna give you lots of different options here. Events can be added to the study using the events tab, which is in the top right corner. And it's that middle tab here. We have two different types of events. We have frame events, which happen just on this frame. So if you notice, I have the instruction frame selected. And then we have trial events that happen on each frame. This can be things like counters, or maybe you have a progress bar that you want to change based on frames. But for today, let's focus on frame events. When you click the little plus sign, this is how you start editing an event. So it's going to pop up as event one, and then you can type a description. I do recommend if you have lots of events in your study, go ahead and add a really nice title and description so you know exactly what you're working on. The next aspect of an event is the trigger. So all events are going to be made up of a trigger plus one or more actions. Okay, so we have lots of different types of triggers. We have user input triggers, which are going to be something that the user does intentionally. So maybe they've clicked on something with their mouse. Maybe they've um, clicked a certain key on the keyboard. They've clicked a button on the screen. They've clicked enter when they're hovering or typing on an object. Or maybe they've scrolled using the scroll bar on the mouse or the trackpad. Then we have physiological signals, which are going to be eye tracking or head tracking. Then we have trial and frame triggers, which are based on what part of the study they are currently on. So when the task initializes, which is before they see the task, but it's when the task has been loaded. Then we have the same thing for frames. And we also have frame start and frame end as options for triggers. This can be great for things like playing an audio clip in the background of the study. You can have that audio clip stop once they end that frame. Then we can do an event when a variable is changed. So this is the value of the variable changes. Then we have object triggers, which are going to be things like audio and video. And this can help with uploading, recording, playing back, etc. And then we have global and external triggers. So these are things like pausing the study, um, something happens with the WebSocket or the API, or the participant leaves the multi-user study. And that can be super helpful if you have lots of users at once, and when someone leaves, you need to back them out of the study so they can try again. So for this, let's do a keyboard trigger as an example. When I click on the keyboard trigger, what I can do is I can decide if they should press the key, press and hold the key, or release the key. So we have three different options here. I'm gonna use press key. And I'm going to say, if you notice, we have all of the different key options here. I'm gonna say they have to press space for this event. We can also allow the number pad and we can allow event propagation. So this is a very simple event, very commonly used in studies for participants to click that space bar when something has to happen. So let's go over the events that we have here. Lots of different events. And just, you know, keep your head above water here because events can get pretty complicated if you start stacking them on top of each other. But the good thing is you don't have to do any coding. All of this is very visual, very intuitive. So the first group of actions we have are object actions. And that's going to be things that change the way an object or element is on the frame. So we can change a property, and this is going to be things like X and Y coordinates, the size, the color. We can control an audio or video object, so start, stop, pause. We can control an object in general. We can copy an object, and we have this event called for each object. All of this is in the documentation. Um, definitely check out these two, they're a little bit more complex. For variable actions, we can set and record a variable. That's a very common one. So 
let's say they press the space bar and we want to record the time that it took them to press the space bar after something happened. We can definitely do that. We can draw a random number, which is great for randomization um, or also just event propagation. We can get some URL parameters. We can do some reading and writing, um, which are going to be very good for multi-user studies. We can do some math and statistics, and we can change some things about variables. We also have some eye tracking things that can happen, um, but that can only be shown if you've enabled eye tracking. Next, we have some array operations, and these are going to be related to array variables. So we can make changes to an array, as well as a data frame, same kind of thing. Jump actions are going to be super, super common. So remember, in Labvanced, the participant cannot move through the study unless you have set up an event specifically to take them there. So when we look at jump actions, what this is going to do, and it's going to move the participant to the next frame or trial or task, depending on what the trigger was. So if I have set up an event that says, press space to go to the next trial, or press enter to move to the next task. I can do something like that using these actions. Finally, we have some control actions, and these are going to be our more complex ones that are going to dynamically change the study in a more detailed way. If then actions are going to really help with some programming here, but you don't need to code, keep that in mind. So if then actions, have a requirement and then a resulting action. So we do have the trigger that still happens for these if-then events, but once the trigger is triggered, then the if condition will be checked. So let's say they push the space bar, but whatever requirement I've set is not met, then the action that's specified down here will not happen. So we can do and groups or or groups, in an AND group, if there's more than one requirement, like this, both conditions must be met. In an OR group, only one of the conditions have to be met for the resulting action. And then you can specify your action down here, and you get all the same options. After that, we have a loop action, and then we have delayed actions. So let's say you want them to activate a trigger, but nothing happens for a few seconds. You can do that. Then we have custom actions, and this is going to be if you do know how to code. So we have things like JavaScript and global CSS. Again, please see the documentation for that information. And then we can paste an action. So if you've just created this very detailed event here, you can use these three little dots here and do some copy and pasting so you don't have to reprogram everything you've just done. All right. So those are all of the events that we have so far. We're always adding new ones, but just remember if you have any questions, you can always check the documentation. And we have several videos that I will link in the description that can walk you through more detailed instructions. Thanks so much for watching.